Say you're on the bus and someone gets a little bit too close and you're like, back off, dude. Get out of my personal bubble. How big is that area? Hey people, Trace here with D News. When you say the words personal space, do you actually know what you're talking about? Chances are you know what your personal space is, but if you grew up in a rural town, it's probably larger than someone who grew up surrounded by humanity in the city. Firstly, according to a 2009 study in Nature, these invisible bubbles are based on the amygdala, which is deep within the brain. It controls aggression, fear, and unsurprisingly, social interaction. If the amygdala is damaged, people may lose their understanding of personal space, and in our teenage years, the size of the invisible bubbles that surround us are solidified. They're highly dependent on culture. So personal space in a public transportation-based urban area here in the United States would be vastly different than those in a car-only rural area in Russia, not to mention the difference between other countries. Back in the 60s, an American anthropologist named Edward Hall determined for Americans there were four invisible bubbles around every person. For Americans, this is the distances, but intimate space, personal space, social space, and then public space. And depending on your relationship, you'd become uncomfortable if someone encroached past a certain level. The thing is, 12 feet is crazy, Edward Hall. Seriously, crazy. You could fit a horse in that space between you and the next public person. There are other ways to categorize the invisible space around you. Neurophysiological space is a touch less arbitrary. This has three levels. Paracutaneous space, which is just above touching your skin, but you can still kind of feel it. Peripersonal space, which is within arm's length. And then extrapersonal space, which is outside of your reach. This is a bit less abstract, so this is the one that science uses. When someone breaches your parapersonal space, your amygdala activates and you react. The simplest is blinking, but you tend to want to retreat to a safer distance. Recently, some researchers found people with higher levels of anxiety will be even more sensitive to the crossing of these boundaries. They identified these people as having a large defensive parapersonal space. DPPS, specifically around their face. I'm gonna issue a challenge here. Try moving just a, a touch closer than you normally would for a whole day. Not a lot closer, but just a bit. See if it starts a conversation about parapersonal space. Tell us about your thoughts on personal space in the comments and subscribe for more D News every day. Thanks for watching. See you later.